So uh, the story that I've been telling you guys has kind of been the relationship between one presynaptic and one postsynaptic cell. Um, and it's rarely that way. There is a rarely a one-to-one -one relationship. Sometimes um, there's as many as 15,000 neurons communicating with this neuron, for instance. So it looks less like these two communicating to one another and more like this, um, but more. So let's define a couple of different situations with neurons. So you're seeing right here what we call convergence, in which you have a whole bunch of presynaptic neurons that are all converging on one postsynaptic neuron. And in this figure, what it's trying to show you with the red and the green is that the green ones are all excitatory synapses trying to depolarize this one postsynaptic cell, and the red ones are all inhibitory synapses trying to hyperpolarize and inhibit this postsynaptic cell. So that is called convergence. What the postsynaptic cell does just really depends on whether I get the axon hillock to an action potential. Because remember, once you get the axon hillock to threshold, you get an action potential, right? As once you open, what you flip over the first domino, they all fall. Okay, so this is called convergence, but there's also um, divergence, and this is divergence. When I have one presynaptic neuron that branches a whole bunch of times, still only got one axon, but there's no limit to the number of branches that axon can form. And it diverges, a single presynaptic neuron diverges to communicate with multiple postsynaptic cells. This, for instance, would be how you created a motor unit if these were all muscle cells instead of neurons, but you diverge, and so this one is the controller for all of the things that are going to occur to these. And they're gonna kind of like do things all at the same time, same time with quotes because the axons are slightly different um, lengths. So what happens is this, if we're talking about convergence again, what happens is if you look at this more closely, what happens is the axon hillock right here of this postsynaptic cell will integrate or like put together the depolarization, hyperpolarization um, to either hit threshold or not hit threshold. And so we're back at the all or none principle that we learned in the membrane potentials notes. The axon hillock um, experiences excitatory and inhibitory synapses um, or uh, impulses and if it hits threshold it gets an action potential and if it doesn't hit threshold it doesn't. Um, so um, this is where it really matters. Now if these two, if there were way more um, excitatory synapses producing EPSPs then it would be more likely to get to threshold or if they were more persistent um, it would be more likely to get to threshold. Or if this one were more persistent, or if there were more of them, it would be more likely to inhibit what's going on. So with that in mind, um, the next concept we're going to talk about is summation. How you get this postsynaptic one to make a decision, not consciously, about what it's going to do.